Hello everyone! In this video, I would like to introduce you to geocoding. And even though you might not have known the name geocoding before, the functionality of geocoding is something that we use all the time, even when we access Google Maps or other mapping services. Geocoding, simply put, is the ability for a computer to take an address and then put a point or a pin or a flag, whatever word you want to use, put that point, that marker, where that address goes in a digital map like this. And so geocoding is one of the GIS functionality or GIS functions that we interact with as a society uh, extremely frequently. It's one of the most common GIS um, functions that we use as a society today because we go to something like Google Maps here or other mapping service and you know we really just expect to be able to type in an address 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and then boom drop that little pin exactly on top of uh, where it should go you know I can even go to someplace else like maybe go over to see the Prime Minister's uh, home over in the UK 10 Downing Street so Regardless of what address you're looking up, we don't uh, expect for this to only work with very famous addresses such as uh, 10 Downing Street or 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We expect basically uh, to be able to geocode any address that we would like and pretty much in demand. This is functionality that has certainly left our desktop and laptop computers. It's built into our uh, cell phones, are most all of our mobile devices, we're able to access services like this and um, even access them through voice recognition software services such as uh, Siri. You know, we expect to be able to, to tell Siri an address and to have uh, it return a, or the iPhone return a, a point exactly where that address is. So we expect this and we expect it to be extremely uh, accurate too. You know, when we uh, type in the address, we expect for that uh, button that uh, to go right on top of where it's supposed to go. Let's see, 605 East There's 605 East Springville Avenue in Champaign. That's where the uh, geography department at the University of Illinois is currently housed. So we type it in and we put that pin right on top of that building. And you know, people, uh, if, if it wasn't there, if it didn't go to the right place, uh, people uh, would be upset about that. People have been conditioned with these data sets to really expect to be able to geocode things with a high degree of accuracy on demand and therefore, you know, it's kind of the characteristic with all of these technologies. As it becomes cheaper, as it becomes more ubiquitous, we tend to use it for increasingly trivial tasks or less important tasks. You know, trying to look for a place, you know, trying to look for a place to get a donut or a hamburger or something after class. We want to be able to geocode the location of potential uh, restaurants or pubs uh, all around us. And so this is something that we use all the time. I want to talk about a couple of other things in general that we're looking at here with Google Maps. Uh, since we're before we get into ex exactly how geocoding works, because one thing I want to do is explain to you why we're talking about geocoding right now. You know, we've been talking about uh, the vector data model and how we can solve problems and answer questions using vector data sets. And so uh, if we now take a look at Google Maps, and of course this is a, a web mapping application, but if you take a look at uh, Google Maps, knowing what you know about the vector data model now, you may be able to um, draw a few conclusions or begin to get some kind of insight into how exactly Google Maps might be working because it is vector based. You know, we can see a lot of the vector data model here uh, on any part of Google Maps. And as you've been working with GIS software, you might have uh, some idea about what exactly is going on here um, with the symbology and so forth. 
So, and actually the reason that we're talking about geocoding right now with vector uh, data theory is because in order to perform geocoding operations, you have to have vector data sets. It's based on vector data. And you actually have to have very specialized vector data sets, with very specialized attributes and so forth. So if you want to do uh, geocoding, then you have to have your area, your city, or whatever area you're trying to do geocoding in uh, represented in special kinds of vector data sets. So I'm just looking around uh, the campus of the University of Illinois here and you can start to, to to look at the vector data sets that this Google Maps is made up with. Here are the different streets. The streets are probably going to be represented as lines. Um, they look like areas here because they've been symbolized in different ways. If I take a look at uh, our different symbology for roads, you might begin to think, okay, so I probably have a line file. There's a line file someplace sitting on some server someplace that is uh, that holds all of the uh, line work for all of the roads. And then the uh, system must know that this is one particular kind of road, this is a different kind of road, and this one here is a different kind of road. And then you know how in uh, GIS packages you go in and symbolize your data sets differently depending on different attributes, depending on what different attributes some features in a data set may have, you may choose to symbolize them differently. And well, that's what's going on right here. They have this uh, yellow symbol with the darker uh, yellow or, or orange outline for uh, this type of road, this major type of road. Then we have a white symbol right here for another kind of road. And then we have a, a darker gray symbol here for another kind of road. And so it, the computer is looking in the attribute table, finding out what particular kind of road every little segment is and then applying the symbology to that depending on uh, on what the attribute information is looks like over here if I come over here and take a look at campus it's even showing me some of the uh, sidewalks so sidewalks those are line files as well but I have a different symbology applied or they have a different symbology applied for the sidewalks than we do for all of the major roads uh, it's pretty easy to come up with uh, uh, examples of area uh, geometry here because all of the buildings here, we have all of these footprints of the buildings. Those are area geometry. It's also, I see several different points right here as well. Looks like all of the bus stops on campus, that's a point file. And then we have the symbology here for the bus stops. So you're looking at uh, a vector data set. Look here, we've got areas for the uh, this part of this creek right here looks like a pond here. We've got an area here that represents Scott Park. We actually have two different ways to symbolize Scott Park because we have a point here that tells me, okay, the park is right here. But then I also have this green symbology they use for parks, which is telling you the aerial extent of the park. We've got point symbols down here for different places to eat with that symbology. So. Uh, you should be able to see that Google Maps here isn't magic. It's based on some of the same principles, or many of the same principles, that we have been learning in this class. It is a vector GIS system. Uh, it is a web mapping application, and like I said, in this class we're not really getting into a whole lot of stuff about web mapping applications and how you might uh, build something like this and host the data out on the server and deliver it to, through uh, the browser like this. I do teach a class specifically in web and mobile development, which we get into web maps and building web applications like this. Well, uh, not as robust as all of Google Maps, but similar in uh, uh, a theory with what's going on. Uh, but uh, you should be able to uh, you should be able to look at this now and have some kind of insight into uh, what's actually making up Google Maps. Geocoding, like I said, is uh, becoming ubiquitous. We use it all the time. You can probably think of all the different things that you use geocoding for. But uh, another thing that uh, geocoding is used for and was one of its, uh, I don't know if it's original applications, but, but certainly one of the first applications for geocoding technology was a 911, an emergency response. You know, now we have Google Maps that has uh, the geocoding service built for, you know, 
I don't know if it's the entire world, but uh, you know, certainly a large chunk in North America, Europe, and and Asia. And I mean, it's got a ton of uh, information in it now. But you know, if you think uh, a few years ago, not even all that long ago, a couple of decades ago, uh, when you're talking about 911 services, and you call up your 911 911 operator and say that you have an emergency situation. Well, how do you communicate location to a 911 operator? Well, chances are you do not give the latitude and longitude coordinates of where you are and where the emergency or where the emergency is happening. Uh, you don't have that information because addresses are an extremely common way for us to give location. So you give the 911 operator an address the 911 operator then needs to know where that is. So instead of having this, this global data set, uh, originally uh, what they did was have geocoding services set up with vector data for all of the different individual localities where a 911, the 911 operator in particular is working. So each 911 office had uh, a GIS that would allow them to geocode when somebody calls in and gives them an address, be able to type that address in, put the dot on the map, and that's how they're able to get um, the fire department or the police department or the ambulance out to uh, your location because they were able to geocode it very quickly. So oftentimes the uh, GIS departments of the cities you know, are operating with a lot of uh, different departments within the city and there's no reason to remake all of that information for every single different department. So as roads change, you know, with the construction department or the highway department or whatever, you know, that needs to be updated in the GIS databases. Names of roads need to be kept current. Any type of uh, information about uh, the, the house numbers need to be kept current. That needs to be uh, exchanged between the fire department, the police department, uh, hospital, ambulance, uh, dispatchers, 911 operators, in order to make sure all of that information is consistent uh, across uh, all of those departments. And so that was an early application for uh, uh, dedicated geo uh, coding services uh, in GIS. So obviously geocoding is very handy, and so we're going to talk about the theory of how exactly geocoding works. But the last thing that I would like to do in this video is tell you how geocoding does not work. Well, how does Google know, some people think? Well, some people think that, well, what must happen is there must be this giant table that Google maintains that in one column of the table, it has every single possible address that you could possibly type into uh, the computer. And then in another column, it has the latitude, and the another column, it has the longitude of that uh, building or, or that address. And so when I type an address in here, they think it must just look up the column on that table uh, that has the addresses in it and then find out what the latitude and longitude is and then put a point at that latitude and longitude. And that's not how it works. Geocoding is more sophisticated than that. That would be uh, geocoding in general is a major operation, but trying to keep uh, the table of all the different addresses and all the different ways that people could possibly type in the address and then match it up with latitude and longitude and plotting latitude and longitude isn't the way that geocoding actually works. So we will talk about how it does work starting in the next video.